Right, Steven Spielberg, you're meant to fucking filming I've done here. Right. Where are we at with this boiler? So this boiler was fitted what, three years ago. Serviced by those guys. Um, and it's never worked properly. Radiators never heated up properly. Boilers have been locking out all the time. This one has been locking out apparently heard from multiple people who work at the care home two days after it fitted it locked out an f28 fault um apparently british gas have probably been out to that particular boiler about 50 times um so i was asked to take the boilers on a care plan and i said i'll strip them down first find anything wrong with them it'll get excluded unless you put it right and then we'll move on from there Quickly discovered there was an F28 fault on there uh, and there was circulation issues. So we got Valiant Glowworm out. They came out uh, in the midst of winter and just at risk both boilers and shut them down because you couldn't get them to circulate. At the time, there wasn't the best circulators. However, I came back the next morning with no messing about. I managed to turn both boilers on, get them firing up and set the high and low CO2 on them. But this one went to an F83 shortly after. So I've been back. I've repiped all this uh, boiler room here. And still have reoccurring issues with this one boiler. This boiler works perfect with a delta T of 20 across the primary loop there. This boiler keeps locking out with an F28 and an F83 fault, which is circulation issue. It's either too much or too low apparently so we got glowworm out glowworm engineer turned up told me i'd piped it wrong i needed to lose the plate i needed to lose a low loss header fit a plate heat exchanger in its place um as i've got too much flow through the boiler so what this guy was saying to me was that my secondary pump was pulling flow through it and it was exceeding what the boiler it was exceeding 21 liters per minute so I kind of disagreed with the guy. Um, that was his answer. We disconnected the pump while he was on site. He went to an F83 fault, but he still maintained that the secondary pump and the, and the low loss header was causing me an issue. Didn't have an explanation as to why boiler two worked, boiler one doesn't work. So I came back on the Saturday. I'm oh, sorry, whilst the guy was here, F28 fault came up. He fitted a new spark generator new electrode and a new PCB. Um, that was on the Tuesday. I came back on the Saturday morning, F28 ignition fault again. So it took me an hour messing about trying to get this F28 to disappear. Got it back on, got the boilers running. However, this boiler here was giving out a different delta T to this one. So this one always reads 10 degrees less than this one. So. I got Glowworm back out. Another Glowworm engineer came out and told me I'd got no circulation through the boiler at all. So we've gone from one engineer saying there's too much to a second engineer saying there's no flow at all. So completely opposite ends of the spectrum. And he was washing his hands of the boiler until I corrected the circulation problem. So I've done nothing, uh, no alterations to the pipe work or anything since the last engineer came. So all I have done it's fitted a flow regulator, so I can see if I've got circulation through this board. I've checked the non-return valve, and I've checked the heat exchanger as well. So, 
at the minute. What have we got on? We've got nothing on at the minute. I've got the pumps disconnected. Let's just plug that one back in and we'll create a demand. Plug that one out and that one out, and we'll just see what flow rate that one follows up. Got a flow rate of just under about 19 litres a minute. That's on its lowest setting, so straight away you can see we've got flow through that boiler there. If there was no flow, that would not be operating. We'll turn all the other isolation valves off, just to prove the only way that can now circulate is through this primary loop. There we go. Let's see if we can get any more circulation out of it. Okay, so we've got circulation through there. You can hear the movement of the water. Pump shut off on F28 volt. Reset that and watch again. There we go, circulation and flow through that loop there. Got everything else turned off. It's all right, everything else turned off. We've got 20 liters a minute, just over 20 liters a minute there. Right, now we're gonna put everything back on. Okay, everything else is now turned on. And you can see we're still maintaining just over 20 litres a minute. So as you can see, my secondary pump is having no impact on this primary loop whatsoever. That's the idea of low loss headers, running two different circuits at two different flow rates. So why is telling me to take it out? I have no idea. So I'm happy, I'll prove the circulation through this boiler. As you can see the boiler, locking out it'll go out on f28 volt there you go we fit the second pump in turn that boiler on there we go as you can see we've got lots of flow now so our flow rate it requires to be bigger because we've got two boilers so, when I phone Mr. Valiant back out this week, I'm not going to be happy if he tells me I've got no circulation through that primary loop. If we turn both these pumps off, we can see that pump there has no impact on that whatsoever. Even on its maximum speed, it has no impact on that flow rate. This one's just decided it wants to work. So I'll go to a circulation issue now, even though we've got loads of flow, we can turn that down. Look, 
circulation fault. So as you can see, we've got one boiler working perfect. One's got a circulation issue. One boiler's working perfect on just under 20 litres a minute. So why won't the other one work perfect on under just under 20 litres a minute? So we've got two boilers here, roughly 20 litres a minute, two together, that's about 42 litres a minute. So if we can get 42 litres a minute down here, and this requires 60 litres a minute, then 42 are gonna go that way, and it's gonna draw another 18 back up from that way, which will give you a dilution. So that's all that's gonna happen there if one's drawing more litres per minute than the other side. It's not gonna impact on the primary circuit at all, which I've proved. Let's try again, Valiant. It's not got flow. Yeah, it's just that the something wrong inside the heat exchanger. There's fine. not enough flow through the heat exchanger. Right. It, does that make sense? Not makes that sense. Fuck all wrong with the well, this is what he <laughs> said to me, and I said, "Well, hang on a sec. I said, "Foot, your mates told me there's too much circulation." I said, "Now you're telling me there's nothing." I said, "I don't believe that." I said, "I know I've got circulation." I said, "One boiler works perfect. One doesn't." Right. So he changed the gas valve again. He changed the electrode again. And then said, we're not working the boilers anymore until you get circulation through the boiler. We're washing our hands of it. So I came back, fitted a flow setter. That boiler there's got 21 litres a minute through it. That boiler there's got 21 litres a minute through it. They're identical. There's right. no fucking yeah, difference yeah, yeah, whatsoever. Yeah, I'm not worried. Right. Um, this F28, in my eyes, it's linked to the F83 somehow. Whether it can't get enough air in there and the fan can't ramp up. I've done a water quality test on it before any work was done on it and it passed. I've got the ID email still. Um, they've been out since and done a water sample test since it's been drained down a few times, sent it to Fernox. Everything passed by the inhibitor was a bit low. So they told me because the inhibitor's low, that's what's causing the F28 fault. And I was like, hang on, the call centre, I've asked that many times, I've had that many emails from technical managers at Valiant who've just told me I've piped it wrong. I've asked them for a schematic on how to pipe it. They haven't got one. So this boiler has worked perfect until the last engineer came and he drained it down. And he said, now I'm getting an F83 on that. And I said, well, mate, I said, I've got 95 videos on my phone, which I have, of this boiler working perfect no matter what. This boiler has not failed at all until I'm shocked. I've come this morning and now there's a fault on that one. But the water quality. So, yeah. Why have I been ordered the heat exchange? Because what they're saying to me is, the last guy who came out, and um, that's for the lift phase, the last guy who came out said, there's something wrong with the heat exchanger, possibly on the air side of it. He said, what I think's happened is, when it's um, all the shit's gone down, congealed at the bottom and made it solid, he said, so it can't light properly, it's starved somehow. He said, that's why we're getting the F28 fault. Does it happen every time? Yeah. Every single time? Nearly every yes, single time. Exchange. Problem we've got, though. Okay, but that... The problem is you need the elbows. They'll now. come off, they will. Do you know what I know? Without cracking. Have yeah. you had them off? Yeah. Oh, They're brand new washers as well, about three, oh. about oh, five yeah. weeks ago. Happy days. Happy days. I've had that heat exchanger out, I've put Have chemicals you? through it, I've jet washed it, everything. So that's what the guy was saying to me, he was like, no, no, there's a blockage in it. I was like, there can't be a blockage in it, mate. I said, because I have had that out. So the only thing I found the was... blockage... Wrong. We'll stop is, the foot litres not, per minute. He's not talking about that blockage, he's talking about gas air blockage. That's what I'm on about, but the he told bit. me both. No, no, it won't be water. That's what I said. I said to him, Water's I said... Water's that one. Yeah. Right, F28 is gas air. But that comes up with an F83 as well. Yeah, that's water. But that could be air. That's causing it. Yeah, in the water. Mm, I'm not convinced. Oh, I am. Yeah. I've played with it, but yeah, you know, yeah. I know what F83 is. It's, yeah. it's overheating. It yeah. do not like it. No, that's not overheating at all. It's not gaining temperature enough. F83 is a because it's got a hot spot on it. Yeah. Right, so, where are we valving off from? Should be able to turn it to a couple of basins. It turned out to be 
about 26 basins, not water. It was a TMV that was passing back and it was literally just going up the um, up the expansion sort of thing, well, through the cold storage and out. So we done that and then I was asked to see if we'd take these on contract. And I said, I'll take them on contract. I said, but I'm stripping the boilers first because it's been with British gas. I went, when I service them, I strip it. So I know the inside out. Yeah. Never seen it work properly. So this one here, I took it apart, cleaned it, put it back together, F28 fault. I spent two hours with the technical guy on the phone. He went, it's the gas valve faulty, mate. He said, you've set the eye, you've set the low, it's not igniting properly, it's your gas valve. I was like, okay, so I put it through for a warranty call. The one next to it, I noticed that was doing the same. So what they both do is they light three times and drop out, and then they stay alight, both of them. Even my Valiant boiler in my house, which is an Ecotech, believe it or not, I've got a Valiant engineer going to that today, does the same thing, right? The guy who came from Liverpool told me that's how they were supposed to operate because it was a downward facing burner. No and I was like, well, hang on a sec. I went, there's ideal logic, some Worcester Bosch on the market and loads of others, and they don't do that. But he said, that's how it's supposed to work. So the one next to it, I haven't serviced that yet. I've been too scared to touch it because I've had so much trouble with this one. Right. Um, and that has worked perfectly. It gives out a DT of 20. This one gives out a DT of 10, no matter what I do. Um, so I know that heat exchange aid should be spotless inside. It's had all the seals changed, and then I've just gone through this over and over again. The engineer saying you've got too much flow, you haven't got enough flow. So, so that's blocked. Yeah, so it's that's... making the fan back off, would you say? So what's happening is, is as it's producing condensation, yeah. condensate water, it's backing up into the bottom of there, yeah. baffling out the uh, ignition process. <clears throat> How often would you say strip that down? I know the MI say like when the fucking readings are what have you. But from an engineer's point of view. Would you like it would, me to tell you? I would do it every year personally. No, never. Why? Because you shouldn't really ever get it. So the only way of doing it is as soon as you open it, it seals knackered. Yeah. So the only way I, well, if you want to do it once a year, it's you put a cap, bump condensate, yeah. and just fill it with white vinegar and leave it standing for half hour. But I still won't want to do that. Yeah. yeah. I don't kind of like that kind of. See, I like to strip shit down. I've sat this in my back garden upside down. We've got some X500 in there, uh, MC5, sorry, yeah, yeah. for for half an hour, 40 minutes, we boiled water in it. And then I've jet washed it out. And I've had a jet wash in there, the air side of it. Yeah. So I'm thinking now, well, it doesn't really say to remove that on the manufacturing instructions. It doesn't really say, no. but that there, I've just filled that up with water. Yeah. So even the heat exchange is not draining it. No. So I'm looking now thinking, well, how much damage do you create if you're not flushing it out every year, realistically, that's what that heat exchange is three, four years old, isn't it? It's fucked. No matter how much hot water I put through that now, but, but that it won't bring be, it back to life. That could be because sometimes when they're installed, yeah, they don't. I think it tells you somewhere in the instructions to actually wash through yeah. the heat exchange. Yeah. So if they aren't, because sometimes they get a little bit of foundry sand. Yeah. You know, obviously we're making them. Yeah. That's just to flush that purpose through. Yeah. And if they aren't, then they've just used condensate water to carry it. It's got stuck. Yeah. In bottom, and that's, that's what's happened. This heat exchanger is just over three years old. Set of the blow room energy. And what's happened is it's had two British gas services, which is just your analyzer and go. And it's had a full strip down by me. The only thing we didn't do was take the sump off the bottom. 
and as you can see all the crap from the heat exchanger come down it's kind of solidified in the bottom of the heat exchanger and it's restricting the airflow also so what's happening is move dog um when it's trying to fire fans backing off it can't ramp up to full speed it's causing f28 fault which is an ignition fault and it's also causing f83 fault which is predominantly a water issue where it's not gaining enough temperature it's not moving fast enough or it's too fast so because the fan wouldn't ramp up to full speed it wouldn't give the full output and this was also in turn calling this fault so what i'm going to do is and my dog stops fucking about i'm going to sit this in a bucket of water with a bit of vinegar and see if i can break that down i just want to see what it takes to get that clean move As you can see you don't want to fill the heat exchange you up it holds water move let's see what it takes to get this heat exchanger clean sitting in vinegar and water for about an hour and a half it still looks pretty crusty Worcester Bosch uh, heat exchanger tool, the rasp. I've gone both ways with this, and you can feel hard blockages and just breaking them down. So it'll be interesting to see how much I'll push out of this in a minute. Look at that. There's obviously something in there. You can see how this is going to end. There you go. You can see the blockage in that heat exchanger. Hold on. That's been jet washed above, below. Three years old, one full strip down. Yeah, it's a poor design if you ask me. Look at that. Completely blocked. how clean it is inside that heat exchanger water side not a bit of muck in there air side less than four years old the state of that that is a bad design if you ask me that's had a soaking water, hot vinegar and water hit with a jet wash five times still unable to clear that blockage there we go you can see what the blade was doing when i was trying to cut into it let's see if we can get that you can see where that's 
stopping. So I call out to this nursing home for a few radiators and they're not working. And there's two, my two boilers just purring away. No problems. However, we have problems on the other side of the nursing home. They're covered with two of the boilers. So we'll have a look at them.